Hi hey y'all, it's Leela with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's tumbler tutorial, I'm going to show y'all how I created this alcohol ink smoke effect tumbler. Like always, all of my materials will be listed in my description below, including some links and coupon codes. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. I'm using a 20 ounce stainless steel tumbler that I have prepped and spray painted. This spray paint is dried on the tumbler and I mix my epoxy off screen. I am using a total of 30 milliliters of epoxy for this tumbler. I am using 30 milliliters of epoxy, so that is a lot of epoxy for this 20 ounce tumbler. Depending on the size tumbler that you are using, depends on the amount of epoxy that you'll add to your tumbler. But for a 20 ounce tumbler, 30 milliliters of epoxy is perfect. It's going to feel like you're going to add a lot of epoxy to your tumbler. That is completely okay and that's how it should feel. So keep adding that epoxy to your tumbler until all of your epoxy is added to your tumbler. Once your epoxy is added to your tumbler, you're going to heat up your epoxy just a little bit. The reason why I'm heating up my epoxy is to pop any of those bubbles that may have created on your tumbler. And I am using my heat setting on high and I'm going to go around the tumbler very quickly. Once you have heated up your epoxy, you're going to let your epoxy cool down before you add any alcohol links to your tumbler. You wanna make sure that your epoxy is cooled down. It is very important because if you add alcohol ink to wet epoxy, then your alcohol inks are going to spread, they're going to fade, and it's not going to have that nice, thick, or vibrant color. I've chosen to do a blue themed tumbler, but you can use any color scheme you like as long as you have your white alcohol ink. So like I said, you can use purple, pur pinks, blues, whatever color, but you have to have that white alcohol ink and make sure it's the ink and it's not that alcohol adhesive or that thicker alcohol ink. So first you're going to place all of these inks on your tumbler. Again, make sure that epoxy is cooled down and you're just going to add them randomly around the tumbler. So you'll see I'm not really overthinking this. I'm adding all these inks around the tumbler until I am no longer able to see that white background. Once I add that initial base coat or those initial colors, I then use my heat gun on low and I add a little bit of heat to the tumbler. This is just allowing that epoxy to thin a little bit. And then I'm adding that white over those inks. This white is very important. Whenever you add this white on top of your inks, you're going to notice all those colors change. So if you do want like a red tumbler, if you add this white over the reds, it's going to look either orange or possibly pink. So keep that in mind. It's going to change that color scheme. But since I'm using a blue color scheme, it's just going to change a different shade of blue. So I wasn't too worried about that. Then I go back in and I add a little bit more of those blues, a little bit more of those whites. I have to pick out a dog hair because Sasha. And then I just let my tumbler spin. Once I finish adding all of these inks to the tumbler, I allow my tumbler to spin on the cup turner for four hours. I turn off my cup turner and I let my cup air dry or air cure for another 20 hours. I did not use fast set epoxy for this step because I feel like I had to take my time with this process. So I feel like with a fast set epoxy, it would have made me rush and it would have dried too quickly. And once my epoxy is cured, I'll see you for the next step. And now that my epoxy is cured on my tumbler, I'm going in with my X-Acto knife or a sharp blade and I'm cutting off any of that excess epoxy that may have cured on the rim. I do this after epoxying every step. So if I epoxy my tumbler four times, then I do this step four times. This just makes my final cleanup process a little bit easier. And then I'm taking my 220 grit sanding block and I'm sanding around the tumbler just to sand away any of those little bubbles that may have been placed on that epoxy. Once I finish sanding around the tumbler, I'm then going in with a 180 grit sanding block and I'm sanding the rim of my tumbler, creating that seal. So you'll see that I'm sanding the rim and then I'm sanding a little tiny piece of that rim around the tumbler to expose a little piece of that stainless steel rim and then wiping my tumbler down with that 91% alcohol to get rid of any of that sanding dust or excess oils on the tumbler. 
And now to add my decals to my Tumblr, whenever you're adding these decals, these decals are going to act as a template. So make sure you are using temporary vinyl or 631 vinyl. You do not want to use permanent vinyl or 651 vinyl for this because you will be placing these vinyl pieces on the Tumblr and then you're going to peel them up whenever you're finished adding your peekaboo or smoke effect design. Both of these designs were found on Creative Fabrica and I will have their website and both of these designs listed in my description below for y'all to check out. And then placing those vinyls onto the tumbler. This is your tumbler. Again, I always make these tumblers for inspiration. So if you don't want to cover up too much of this beautiful blue alcohol ink background, then add a lot of these vinyls and decals to the tumbler. So you'll have all of those blues popping up instead of having more of the smoke effect. So you'll see at the end what I'm talking about. I'm adding just this decal to this side. And then on the reverse side, I have two fish that I'm adding just kind of swimming around. Um, and then I'm going to add that smoke effect. So again, this is going to be a peekaboo effect. This is just the template. So if you want more of that blue to be peeking through, then add more of your decals or designs. And then for some reason, I just did not like this decal placed the way it was placed on my tumbler. So um, I am just ripping it up, I'm recutting it, and then I'm adding it back on the tumbler. I usually uh, like to show y'all whenever I make a mistake to show y'all that everybody makes mistakes. You could just recut it, it's not the end of the world, compromise, and then move on. So it took me a maybe 10 to 15 minutes to just redo this, put it back on the tumbler, and then peel off that transfer tape, and I'm ready to go for the next step. Once all of my vinyl is placed on my tumbler, I'm now going to go in and spray paint in my tumbler. I am choosing white. The reason why I'm spraying this tumbler white is because that smoke effect is going to be gray. So you want a light color. So with the blue, the white, and the gray, I think it looks beautiful together and I think it looks really clean. I am using pop of color spray paint and with pop of color spray paint, it's really nice because it dries really quickly, but you can use any brand you have. You can use matte finish, gloss finish, you might have to do two or three coats of spray paint, but that's okay. Do your first coat of spray paint, let it dry, and then do two or three more coats, and then you'll have a fully spray painted tumbler. And once my tumbler spray paint is completely dried, I'm going to go in with that smoke effect using my candle, my utensil, a lighter, and some paper towels. This is very, very cheap. This is very affordable. All of these items can be found at the Dollar Tree, and then you add that smoke effect. I know a lot of people, they use different types of candles. They use some torches. Um, it's really up to you, whichever method you find easy and whichever materials you have on hand, use whichever way you feel comfortable the most. And you'll see I'm just adding those flame, or not flames, <laughs> those uh, smoke onto the tumbler. So you just place your knife over that flame and it's going to create that black smoke. And then you place your tumbler over the smoke and that smoke is going to catch those flames and stick and adhere to that paint. And I decided to switch candles. I wanted to show y'all, like I said, this is a Dollar Tree tea light candle and you can use this and it works perfectly fine for your tumbler. Using a smaller candle, it adds smaller smoke effect designs. If you're using a bigger candle, it adds that bigger smoke effect design. These are your tumblers. You make them whichever way you like, and I'm sure no matter which way you choose, it's going to turn out beautiful. And then without the tumbler, I just wanted to show y'all how I placed my utensil on or over that flame. You'll see that I'm placing that knife on top of that flame and I'm letting that flame uh, kind of peek over. So I'm adding that utensil just halfway on the flame and you'll see that smoke generating and moving up 
above that knife. You can use a spoon, a fork, whichever utensil you have on hand, but I've been using this knife for about three years. I just wipe it down with a paper towel and then I reuse it for my next time. Once you have your desired smoke effect on your tumblers, now you're going to peel up that vinyl. Be very careful while peeling up this vinyl and really take your time because you might kind of be heavy handed like myself and use that weeding tool and then scrape your tumbler and scrape away that design. So whenever I'm using that weeding tool, if you guys notice, I'm placing that sharp weeding tool towards my vinyl. So if I do happen to scrape or my hand slips, it slips the paint onto the vinyl and it doesn't slip onto the tumbler. So that's very important, that's something I've learned over the years. Really take your time, pick at that vinyl and then just take your fingers and peel away and it's super easy. After I applied my smoke effect, I did not have to seal this tumbler. I'm going right in and I'm removing that vinyl. So you apply your smoke effect and then after two minutes when you're finished applying that smoke effect, you just remove your vinyl. And once all of your vinyl is removed from your tumbler, I'm going in with my Krylon Crystal Clear acrylic coating and I just spray one generous coat of this around the tumbler, around the entire tumbler. The only reason why I do this is because I don't want that smoke effect to fade. The first time I did this smoke effect, I epoxied over the smoke and it faded just a little bit. So I've always just sprayed a acrylic coating over the cup and it's never faded since. Once that acrylic coating was dried, I went in with my first coat of epoxy. So this again is a 20 ounce tumbler. I did two coats of epoxy. So my first coat was a 10 milliliters of epoxy total. That's five milliliters part A and five milliliters part B. I let that cure and then I did another 10 milliliters of epoxy. So I did two 10 milliliters of epoxy for this tumbler just to give it a nice seal and I wanted two thin coats and then I let my tumbler cure or my epoxy cure and then I did my cleanup process once my epoxy was cured on my tumbler. You'll see that I'm going in with my final exacto knife or cutting for this tumbler and then I'm going in with my acetone. Once I finish cleaning up the inside and the rim of my tumbler, I always wash my tumbler out with some dish soap and that works very well. Make sure you're washing it out very well because you are using acetone. And once you're finished cleaning up your tumbler, your tumbler is ready to go. And look how beautiful the final result of this tumbler is. It is so clean looking. Like I said, I love that blue and that white and the gray together. It just looks so clean and just so neat. And you can have fun with this. Change up your alcohol ink colors, change up your designs. I'm sure whatever you guys create, like I said, will be beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Tumblr and craft videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.